In thermal physics, we have a term called heat. Now heat is defined as a transfer of thermal energy between a system and its surroundings. I just want to point this out. Now first of all, this is the definition for heat itself. And what do I mean by transfer? I mean an exchange. So what this means is that uh, you can't just have something that, that contains heat. Heat is when two things exchange energy. Okay, so there's a transfer of energy uh, between a system and something else. There are lots of ways to transfer heat. I mean, here's just an example. You could have a fire here where you have some convection, or you can have something called conduction or radiation. And there are other ways like advection. Uh, there are lots of ways for thermal energy to be transferred. But the key thing here, though, is just to know that it is all about a transfer of energy. Now, we have a symbol for it in physics. We actually have a way to write it down. So the symbol that we use for this is called, oops, I didn't make that very nice. The symbol that we use is Q, or sometimes we use delta Q. Again, uh, that's because we have a change in something. So Q, this represents what we call heat. Now, heat has units of J, which stands for joules. So we measure heat in joules. That should make sense because joules are a form of energy. That's how we measure energy. So, uh, so this is really all we need from heat. Again, like I said, uh, an object can't contain heat. You know, just like an object can't contain work. You know, work and heat, for example, are all about transferring energy. So, what we can do now is go on to another definition. We can do temperature. So, temperature. This is a fundamental one. I mean, how do we even define this, right? Uh, it's a measure of the average kinetic energy of molecules. So here we'd be considering maybe like a, I don't know, like a box. Let's just say I draw myself a little box in here. And inside that box, I've got a bunch of little particles. Maybe I've got one molecule going that way, and I've got another one maybe going that way, and maybe I've got another one going this way. And these are going to bounce off each other and do all sorts of funny things. And they all have speeds. And so it's really important then to understand about kinetic energy. And do you remember how kinetic energy goes? We have an equation for it. EK, that's energy kinetic, is equal to 1 half m times v times square, uh, sorry, squared. So that would mean this is a form of energy. This is 1 half times the mass of the particle times the velocity squared. So if temperature is all about kinetic energy, then what this tells us is, this is really important here then, that temperature, uh, we could say here, depends on speed. Because you see, uh, we have a speed term here. In fact, it depends on speed squared. So we could say, you know, temperature depends on uh, the speed squared. What this really means then is uh, higher speed. So, you know, if you have these particles actually moving faster, then you have a higher temperature. And of course, if you have a lower speed, then obviously it works the same way. So lower speed means lower temperature. Higher speed means higher temperature. But it's important to understand it's just the average. And that's because some of the particles may actually go slower, some go faster. Because we have a box here, and there's lots of different particles allowed. Now what we do, we actually have a symbol for this as well. Maybe I'll write it on this page, actually. So we do have a symbol for this. And the symbol that we use, uh, yeah, I'll do it on the other page here. So for temperature, we have a symbol. The symbol we use is, well, good news, it's something you probably know, it's T. That's for temperature. Now we use units of Kelvin or degrees Celsius. Americans like to use Fahrenheit, for example, but the typical ones that we use in physics are Celsius or Kelvin. And we have an equation, or have a way of sort of converting things. So if we have a temperature that's measured in Kelvin, how do we get that uh, from Celsius? Well, we would say that it's the temperature in Celsius, and we have to add to it 273. Turns out it's 273.15, but let's just say it's 273. So what this means then is that whatever temperature you are in Celsius, add 273 to it, and that gives you the temperature in Kelvin. So this is a really important equation here. This is what we need to deal with thermal physics when we talk about temperatures. Now, um, when we talk about the difference between these two scales, the good thing is that Kelvin and Celsius go up by the same amount. In other words, if you have a, a rise in temperature by one Celsius, uh, do, can you see that you'll also have a rise in temperature by one Kelvin? This is just a matter of how you move the scales. 
this actually comes from historical reasons. It turns out that, you know, if let's say you're doing um, a graph, you could actually see, you know, what happens with the temperature right here. And we can have different properties here. Let's say um, we could have like the uh, pressure, for example. And if you did this right here and you, you know, did it in Celsius, you'd have, you know, your, your graph would sort of go like this. At some temperature, there'd be some pressure. And at larger temperatures, larger pressures. If you look at this, you can extend this graph all the way back here. And it turns out there's this magic number here where the pressure would technically be zero. And it turns out that's what we call zero degrees Kelvin. Now the Celsius scale is just like the Kelvin scale, except it's, uh, it's got a different starting point. The Celsius scale is interesting because it is actually set based on water or at least H2O and what happens to it. So we call it zero degrees Celsius and we have 100 degrees Celsius. These are the important things because this here is where things freeze and this is where things uh, boil. Well, you can say they freeze here or they melt over here and over here they're uh, liquid or they're gas. So we have the Celsius scale working on this, whereas Kelvin is all about what we call absolute zero. So this, for example, zero degrees Kelvin is what we call absolute zero. Now, um, I don't know if you're ready for an awesome, awesome joke, but uh, here it is. Uh, did you know about the guy who reached absolute zero? Now, this is almost too stupid. Okay, so <laughs> did you hear about the guy who reached absolute zero? He's okay now. Get it? Zero degree scale. Oh, that is so bad. Okay, so let's actually go to something I think is actually kind of fun way to visualize this. So let's go back here to the temperature and average kinetic energy. And let's talk about this relation between temperature and higher speed here. So I'm going to go to my favorite website for physics. It's called PHET. And I clicked on heat and thermal physics here, heat and thermo. If I go there, I can actually look at the one that says gas properties, which is this one right here. And I can open that one up. And I get this. Now, what does this do for me? This is a silly little man here. I like how it's actually a little spaceman, like a little guy in a spacesuit, because that implies that the outside of this is a vacuum. And I love how you can actually add heat or uh, remove heat. And I like how you actually have a box where you can open or close the box. And you can even choose what kind of uh, material you put in. You can even choose gravity. But let's assume we just leave everything like this. And I just take this and I just pump in some material. I just pump in some particles here. Now, Let's look carefully at what these particles are doing. Do you notice some of them, I mean, they're all bouncing off the walls, but you notice some of them are going a little bit faster than others. There's some that are going a little bit faster, some are going a little bit slower. See, this one right here, for example, is going really, really fast. Whoa. Um, whereas this one right here, for example, is going really slow until it runs into stuff. Look at the temperature here. This is at 300 degrees Kelvin. Now, what I'm going to do then is add some heat. And I want you to watch the speeds of these because this is what we're hopefully going to see is that as I add heat, I should be seeing these guys go faster. So let's just see as I add heat to it, you can you see the temperature right here rising? So as I add heat to it, hopefully you'll see them, they're actually going faster now. The average speed is actually much, much faster. You can see now they're going much quicker. And that's because temperature is all about the average kinetic energy, which tells me something about the speed. So the faster they move, the hotter it is. And conversely, if I remove if I remove heat, in other words, I lower the temperature, look at the thermometer here, keep your eye on that. So you're gonna see the thermometer is going to say it's colder, colder temperatures. And look at the speed of the particles. You can see they're actually slowing down. So there is this direct relation between speed of the particles and the temperature. Obviously, if I was really patient, I could keep this thing in here going down to zero degrees Kelvin, and technically everything should stop at zero degrees Kelvin. You can't quite get there, but you can get really, really close. But in any case, I just thought this is a really nice way to visualize what's going on inside, let's say, a box here. Well, that's how we define temperature. Turns out we define temperature all about the average kinetic energy of these molecules. And temperature is related to the speed.